Welcome back to another captivating episode of the Way Up Podcast, where we explore the journeys and insights of remarkable individuals who have carved their own path to success. I'm your host, Jeff Knoll, and today we have the honor of sitting down with the true embodiment of resilience, integrity, and wisdom, Mike Dunbar. Mike, the president of Security Bank of Pulaski County, brings to the table a wealth of experiences that have shaped him into the extraordinary individual that he is today. A former lawyer and a proud veteran of the U.S. Army, Mike has worn many hats throughout his life, each one revealing a unique facet of his character. As we dive into our conversation with Mike, we uncover the profound truth behind the images of success that society often presents to us. Mike challenges us to embrace our individuality and authenticity, urging us to let go of the preconceived notions of what it means to be successful. Beyond his professional accomplishments, Mike is a devoted husband, a loving father, and a proud grandfather. These roles have added depth and perspective to his life, shaping his worldview and values in profound ways. Join us as Mike shares his insights and reflections on finding one's true path in life. He reminds us that success is not confined to a singular mold, but rather an ongoing journey of personal growth where the key lies in embracing our unique selves and striving to become the best version of who we truly are. The Way Up Podcast is sponsored by me. I'm a real estate broker in the state of Missouri, and I believe that this message is worth my investment. Hang with us till the end. I know you won't be disappointed. Hey, I'm excited to be here with my friend, Mike Dunbar, and I met him through the Chamber of Commerce. He is extremely involved in supporting a lot of local things, uh, events and organizations, and the Chamber just happens to be one of them, and they put on a program called Leadership Pulaski County. So he was pretty involved in coming in and speaking to us a few times, but at the graduation, he talked about um, you know, the image of a successful person. And I was like, man, I have got to get this guy on my podcast to talk about that. So Mike, I'm so grateful that you joined us. Thank you so much. Uh, Tell everybody uh, a little bit about who you are, where you're from and how you ended up in this position. Sure. And uh, thank you for having me. I always enjoy doing this when it involves, you know, talking about our community and, and talking about whether it be in banking or just, you know, what a great place we live. So uh, my path started uh, back in uh, 1980 when I graduated from college and went to law school, uh, and I was on an ROTC scholarship, which meant you pay back your uh, your military obligation, and I arrived at Fort Leonard Wood as a, a young uh, lieutenant JAG officer, where I served uh, four years, primarily as what they call a trial counsel, but it's just their term for a prosecutor. So I was a prosecutor in the military for four years, and um when it was time to, to get out of the military, uh, Janet and I had to make a de- decision. I could go back to Arkansas, where we're from, and uh, work for a larger law firm or St. Louis or Kansas City. And uh, we're both from uh, small towns in Arkansas. We decided to stay in uh, Waynesville, St. Robert, and where I was in private practice, oh gosh, uh, 16, 17 years. And uh, when my son uh, got to be in the ninth grade, my wife had a home decor and gift store business. It was what, what's most important. What do you want? Uh, we had a thriving law practice uh, working, I don't know, 65, 70 hours a week. But there was no way I could make it to my son's um, events, whether it be at the school, whether it be soccer or tennis, uh, help Janet at the store. So we decided to have a life change. And uh, uh, we bought into Security Bank, uh, where I served as chairman of the board for uh, five or six years. And then uh, Keith Pritchard and I uh, uh, changed roles where he became the chairman and I went to be president of the bank. Uh, And that's what I've done now for the last 20 years is is working in the banking industry. Uh, Something that uh, has brought me a lot of fulfillment in life because you get to not only work with great people, but you get to help your community and uh, you have a little more normalcy than what you do in a, in a private practice of law. So that's what brought me to here and um, uh, never uh, regret making that life change, uh, going from uh, practicing law to uh, banking. 
Yeah. So when you were younger, did you ever imagine that you would do something like that? Uh, I think uh, early on, I knew I was going to uh, go to law school uh, if I could get in. <laughs> and then yeah. fortunately, I did. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, working uh, at, at uh, being on the board of directors of a bank or running a bank, never. I, I, that never really occurred to me. I always knew that what I wanted to do was uh, hang a shingle, uh, so to speak, and, and practice law. And um, what I really learned over those 16 or 17 years in practicing law is that law trains you for a lot of things, not just trial work. You don't have to be a trial attorney necessarily to uh, be successful with a law degree. And, and that's what I tell a lot of people today. Uh, law school can be a catapult for whatever you want to do in life. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to practice law. Um, it's kind of akin to, you know, I know a lot of CPAs who really don't do accounting. They have their own businesses because that accounting degree has taught them uh, a lot about business. Uh, a law degree teaches you a lot about business. And so uh, I tell people, you know, just because you have a degree in X, doesn't mean that life, you don't need to be flexible and, and do something else. So, yeah, but no, I wouldn't have thought if somebody said, Mike, you're going to be an owner of a bank and, and you're going to uh, run that bank. I said, no, no, I'm going to practice law and, uh, and do that. But uh, uh, this has brought me a, a lot more flexibility uh, to be with my family and to be involved in the community. So as you were coming up, you were going through the ROTC scholarship, going to school, getting your law degree uh, through all of this. What is a few challenges that you faced that that maybe made you rethink what you were doing and, and have to come out at it a different angle? OK, so I, I think everything goes back to the way that I was brought up. Uh, uh, Janet and I, we, we're, we're from the same town. We went to high school together. And uh, we were brought up in a culture of uh, one values were ethics, honesty, hard work. You stay until you get the job done. I mean, we all want to be paid. I'm not saying that, but it was more about completing your task. Uh, the Army uh, certainly taught me that, that it's about honesty, loyalty, uh, duty to your country and completing the task, no matter what that task may be. It, it taught me that there instead of saying no, try to figure out a yes. Sometimes there's just a no, but mo most of the time, if you work to solve a problem, uh, you can do that. And that's what law school taught me. That's what the army taught me. And that's what uh, my parents had always taught me. So, and when you reach those challenges of in law school, I'm, it, it is labor intensive in law school. And you, you, you get to 10 o'clock at night and you go, okay, I'm done. But you've got to test the next morning. You go, you know, I need to I need to finish <laughs> these pages. Uh, and, and so you do that. Um, I look back to my father, who was a huge role model and my mother. And I was getting ready to take the bar exam in Arkansas. And Arkansas went from a 95 percent pass rate to the semester before I took it or the summer before it went to a 60 percent pass rate. So don't know why I, I just knew. Holy cow, the odds on passing had been really good and they went to bad. And I never will forget, I was uh, at the hotel where we were taking the bar exam. And then you took it by paper. You didn't have a computer <laughs> to sit down and take it on. And my dad came uh, and picked me up for dinner. And uh, he looked at me and he said, um, you know, you, you've worked your whole life to get to this point And you've done everything you need to do. Now, clear your head, breathe. And remember everything you've learned and you will do fine. That, that, that meant more to me than anything. Did you pass the first time? Oh, I did. Yeah. And that nice. year it was 62%. And um, one of the reasons I get a little emotional about my dad passed away about a year ago. And the last thing he told me was you are prepared for death now because you've watched me. That's pretty awesome. So, as, yeah, as a, I, uh, that, you know, you, I, yeah, but everything ties. Right. So mm -hmm. when you start talking about your challenges, you, you look, you draw back on your life experiences. And my parents and, 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 and Janet's parents, who I've known, you know, our whole lives, basically, have, have taught me that be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. 
in each stage of life they've prepared me. Yeah. There well, you I think, go. I think that's an excellent segue into what you spoke on at that LPC graduation about the image of what we believe a successful person looks like. So I just right. want you to to talk about that because that that moved me. You caught my attention. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully I'll get it right again. But, you know, I, I, I've always believed uh, uh, the image of a successful leader is one that starts with always be yourself. Don't try to emulate somebody else because we all have those deep, we have our core values that, that we have been taught and that we've been blessed with, with our family. And you can never, as a leader, you can never demand respect. You have to earn the respect. To, to me, to be a successful leader, that's what it, what it boils down to is I, I work hard. I lead my example. I try to be my person. I try not to be somebody else that's a successful leader. I try to be me. And I try not to um, do something that is against my personality, or I try not to change my personality. I try to do focus on those things that will get people to buy into my vision, to buy, buy into our mission. But I try to do that with who I am. And you have to treat people with dignity and respect. Um, it was like a, a yesterday, uh, it was at one of our community uh, meetings and somebody came up with an idea that I, didn't, I don't agree with, but you know what, it was his idea. And I should respect that idea and respect him as a person and not just jump up and down and say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of, but respect and find out where he is coming from. Why does he think that? Why does he think that is the best way to do things? So. I, I've learned over time that um, that basically treat people with respect, try to earn their respect, and try to lead them to the to your leadership and and what you believe in in your business. Yeah. No. I hope so, that answered your question. <laughs> well, it it, it does. Uh, just to go into a little bit of background for why you captured me with your your mm -hmm. speech that you gave was. Whenever I got into real estate in 2019, I had this image of what I thought a successful real estate agent right. looked like. And that was essentially dressing like you, which right. that's not me. That right. is not me. I, I'm i wearing shorts right now. I have a hard time committing to long mm. pants unless it's cold right. outside. Like it there you is. Go. And I was, I was trying to talk a different talk and be this what I thought needed to be, what I needed to be for people to trust me, to want to work with me. But the more that I did that, I felt, I felt obstinance of people kind of not really receiving me right? because it wasn't authentic. It wasn't genuine. Uh, whenever I just decided to lean into the, I'm different than a lot of people. I'm not normal. I'm, I can fully lean into the fact that I'm a little bit odd. Right. It's okay, but people like me because of that. But you know, and 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 I do. Anytime I talk to uh, get the opportunity to talk, I, I do. I tell people, be yourself. Um, in the banking industry, we'll, we'll talk about dress. If you go in the banking industry, I am probably a, a dinosaur in that I still wear a tie. That's me. That's I I I wore a tie all through when I practiced law. And I uh, wore a tie in banking. Uh, I had I I I have every now and then will go open collar, <laughs> not very often, but still. But you know, but just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for Rob Wilson, or mm -hmm. Keith, or Carl, or whoever it may be. Um, if you're visiting with a cattle guy and you show up in a tie and a sports jacket, he's going to. You don't understand my, my business. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, just like, uh, you know, uh, I grew up uh, working on a, in a rice and bean field. I promise you there was not one farmer that, that had a tie on. Right. And they were all successful. So, yeah. um, and we all had different ideas. Um, but it, it, it's, to me, it's, it's never about, um, you know, what you look like on the outside is what I see in your eyes when I'm talking to you. I mean, mm -hmm. real estate uh, is a lot like banking, right? It's about trust. It is. It is about trust. If, 
you know, is medical field. If you go to a doctor and and you don't have trust in what he or she is telling you, you might as well go to another doctor. Same with real estate, same with banking, same with legal. It's do I trust what you're telling me? And uh, uh, most of us are good enough that we can smell the smoke mm -hmm. when, when you're going, this does not make sense. He, he's just telling me what I want to hear, not what is the truth. So no, right. I, you know, uh, you know, we, we have to move with the times and we have to be ourselves. And I'm convinced that all of us have that inability to, to be a good leader. We just have to make sure it's coming from a place inside of us um, and not from somebody else. Uh, you know, Johnny Morris, for instance, you know, we all would aspire to be what Johnny Morris is, right? Bass mm -hmm. Pro successful has done everything. He's got people that follow his mission. And uh, if you've ever read any of his, uh, uh, not books, but comments, or if you ever heard him speak, every one of them start with, well, I just did what I thought was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been in that, uh, oh, at Bass Pro, he's got that little museum yeah. or the the stuff around that. And uh, I can't think of what that's called, taxidermy. They have all that taxidermy right, yeah. museum that you go through. Yeah. And he's got quotes and stuff up. And I'm like, man, this just seems like the most normal, everyday, down-to-earth guy. Uh, I have a relative that works for the Bass Pro manufacturer. I guess his office is in the same building she's in. And she says yeah. he walks around the building and, you know, comes and talks to people that are, are stuff in boxes and right. doing day-to-day. -day. He's down in the weeds of what's happening. Right. And, 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 and he appreciates what what they do right you know we all think that um, our job is the most important right but you know but the the truth is the guy sitting next to me uh, his job is just as important as mine um i was at uh, whiteman air force base uh, oh it's been several years ago and um uh, the commander there told a story that you know he was visiting with uh, the airmen there they, they don't call it the airmen uh, yeah airmen and he uh, he asked uh, this cook, he said, what do you do to contribute to the Air Force? The guy's a cook. And, and you, you look out the window and there's a stealth bomber. Right. And so you're going, oh, boy, you know, what a question. Without missing a beat, that guy looked up and he said, I prepare the salads that allow those pilots to fly their mission, that allow those mechanics to work on that plane. I nourish their body. And I help contribute to this Air Force. And I'm thinking, wow. This guy, he 20, 21 years old. And I thought, he has perspective. Mm -hmm. He has taken what he's been assigned and he's gone, this is why I'm important. And as compared to a fighter pilot, you think, oh, well, there's no comparison. But when you break it down to the common denominator, that general treated that young man with respect. And, and, you know, and I thought, wow, if we treat everybody like that, that's the sign of a leader. That's what I believe. Absolutely. He, he wasn't trying to tell him to be something else. He wasn't trying to say, you know, what, why do you contribute? And that young man without a beat said, this is my job. And I provide the nourishment for everybody else. Wow. What a cool story. Yeah. So with, with your position and what you do, it takes a lot of energy to be able to keep up and be active in all of these community events and doing your job in the bank and all of the roles that you have outside of that as well. You know, having engaging with your wife and, and your kids and you have grandkids. Grand, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to be active in all of these things, that takes a lot of energy. What what do you do that that recharges the batteries? What is your do you have a morning routine? Do you what what does that look like? Well, um, the, the first thing I do and, and the last thing I do um, uh, every morning and every night is, you know, uh, I thank God for all the blessings that he's given me. And I get up every day saying, I've been given another opportunity uh, in this world. Um, uh, Janet and I have been married 43 years, and, and our routine is the same every day. We, we pretty much get up uh, at the same time. Uh, 
although she's retired now, she didn't hit out the door. Uh, but we get up every morning and then we go to bed every night. We thank God for what we've been provided because, you know, but for the grace of God, there go I, right? Uh, and I look at each day as an opportunity and not as, oh boy, what am I doing today? Yeah. That, that's, that's what, that's what, that's what does it for me. Um, uh, instead in, in the, in the evening, instead of, you know, sitting down to Netflix or you know, there's not much TV on anymore, unless you like sports, um, uh, are getting drugged down in, in the, in the day of the news of what's going on. Uh, we sit down and visit. How was your day? How was my day? And and I try not to say, oh, it was fine. <laughs> you know, that yeah, the guy that's fine. that's the easy answer, but but but, but it's I, a crock. I think that, that that we we I find enjoyment in talking about our blessings, and you know, not that every day is great. You know, um, uh, yesterday started out horrible, right? You, you walk out and and uh, uh, a raccoon had gotten in the trash or something, you know, and you're going, oh, man. But at the end of the day, you know, we have food on the table. Uh, we get to talk to, uh, I get to talk to my son and daughter-in-law and grandkids if they'll do that. And I, I, I look at how I'm just blessed. Yeah. And I looked at, I know that at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to look myself in the, in, in the mirror and I'm going to go, you know, I was honest. I was ethical. I did the right thing. And then that way I can go to sleep at night. But that's how I look at the day as a blessing, an opportunity, and not as, oh boy, what, what have, what's on my schedule today? Yeah. When you start your day with gratitude, it's really hard to not yeah. be excited about what's coming up. Yeah. Uh, it I, is I'm, an opportunity. I'm, yeah. I, I'm trying to think, you know, where I read this, but, you know, I, 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 I live by this, you know, there's three ways and you can turn it always to fail or, or always succeed, but three ways to fail are you complain about everything. You blame others for your problems and you're never grateful. Yeah. You know, and when, and I try to surround me uh, myself and my dad always uh, told me, he says, Hey, you know, if you're going to fly with the eagles, you you you, you can't. Uh, as I say, soar with the eagles, you can't fly with the buzzards. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to get above that. And uh, and so I I, I read this uh, someplace, and uh, but you know it, you, you know those people that all they do is complain, all they do is blame somebody else for their problem, and they're not grateful for what they have. They they get up every day with a different perspective. And they come to work with a different perspective. Um, we all have problems, right? We all have family problems, uh, whether we're taking care of uh, our parents as they gain in age or um, as, you know, I hit Medicare, you know, uh, it seems like now I'm on pills and everything. But, you know, but I look at it, you know, I, I've been given an opportunity every day to come to work. And I'm fortunate that at Security Bank, we have people that I enjoy working with that uh, love and believe in our community, believe in our bank. And um, it just makes my day go better. Yeah. It makes a difference whenever you have people that share your vision as well. That's, that's right. huge. Yeah. And, and it's not anything that, that, that I try to say, you're going to do it my way or the highway. What was that? That was that movie. What was that? Thing? Uh, Roadhouse. <laughs> and, uh, yep. Patrick Swayze. Uh, my way or the highway. Uh, I, I don't think that's the way you can, you know, ultimately as a leader, you have to make the decision, but you also have to respect everybody else's opinion and then be true to yourself. Right. Have you, have you read the book um, by Jocko Willink? It is called extreme ownership or have you, have you heard no, of that? No, I've read that. No. So Jocko. I need, I need to write that down. What's it called? It, it's called Extreme Ownership, and it's Extreme by Jocko Ownership. Willink. Jocko okay. has a podcast. Um, okay. Jocko has a bunch of a bunch of content on YouTube as well. He's pretty mm -hmm. he's pretty intense because he's Navy. Right. He, he led a Navy SEAL team. Oh wow! But he t he goes into depth about what you're talking about of you know blaming everybody else and and mm -hmm. honestly that just makes people miserable. But whenever you take ownership of 
of what's going on in your life rather than putting it onto somebody else and casting blame somewhere else and always looking where to point the finger. Whenever you take ownership of that, it gives you power because anything that sucks in your life, you can change it. You right. have the power to change it. Mm -hmm. It's not up to somebody else. It's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. Right. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I've uh, long been a believer of control what you can control. Yeah. And and if somebody else is doing wrong, that's on them. All I know is that this is my path, mm -hmm. and I stay on my path, and I try to stay within my personality, within my capabilities. I can't control somebody else that's dishonest. I can't control somebody else that doesn't work as hard. I can't control those things. I control what I can control. And uh, I, I, I try to live by that. Yeah. And don't sweat the small stuff. Right? There you don't go. sweat the small stuff. If it's, if it's out of your control, why, why get upset about that? I, I had a situation whenever my mom passed away, I was getting some grief from my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And I was riding in the trunk with the truck with my uncle and my uncle was a business owner for several years, wonderful mm -hmm. leader. And, and he said, Jeff, I see you're stressing out, but mm -hmm. he said, is, is this different than any, any way that things have happened in the past? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, this is how she acts. He said, then why are you upset about it? You don't have any control over that situation. Right. If it's out of your control, You've got to let that go. That's God's business. That's not your problem. Right. Mm -hmm. That is out of your hands. Don't stress right. on that. Right. You know, it's it's just like in, in today's business world. Um, you know, I, I'm in banking and and uh, interest rates are have been on the rise now. Unprecedented interest rates where, you know, we enjoyed the years where prime was uh, 3.25 and now it's 8.25, likely to go to eight and a half before the end of the year. Mm. I, I can't control what, what the Fed does. You know, I'm a banker, but those guys, you know, the, 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 I'm assuming they're much smarter than me and they know what they're doing. But what I can control is for our customers saying, okay, let's prepare for this. What do we need to adjust to make it where your business is going to continue to operate and flourish? Because I can't control that rates are going up. Uh, that that's 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 beyond my power. But what I can do is sit down with a customer or, you know, somebody in the bank or wh whatever bank you work at or financial institution and say, how do we help your business six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, when your rates were at 5 percent? Well, the next time your your note comes for uh, renewal, it's likely to be eight and a half, nine percent. And, you know, that's real money, um, you know, for a small business that let's say they, they've borrowed, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. You're talking um, probably 10 percent of their profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're losing just to interest on the loan. Um, and so what you do is instead of going, hey, sorry. You sit down and say, okay, let's look at your business. Is there something we can streamline? Is there something that we can restructure? Is there something that we can do that will get you past this? Um, you know, being in the real estate business, I mean, you know, we all enjoyed the period when uh, home loans were two and a half percent. They're not two and a half percent anymore. No, they're not. But does that mean we stop buying homes? No, it no. does not. It, it does not. And but what we do, though, is we adjust on, you know, you know, maybe instead of a four hundred thousand dollar home, we look at three hundred thousand or you know whatever it may be. Uh, maybe we look at some modeling that that helps you get into that home. We, we figure out a way to uh, help you put a little more money down where you lower the payment or if you're looking to, uh, you know, a lot of people products that we're doing now where they've got that 3% uh, home loan, but they need uh, money for uh, their kid's college or their grandkid's college or for whatever it may be, you don't want to touch that first mortgage, right? It's at 3%. But you still got to get the money for college. And so you figure out how do we do some innovation to say, okay, let's do a second deed of trust 
that's going to be a higher rate, but leave that first one intact until there comes a time that we can refinance. And so you, you have to think outside the box and uh, as you know, a leader for whatever organization, whether it be banking or real estate, you have to think outside the box. How can I, instead of saying no to a dream, how do I help fulfill that dream? And that's what we have to work toward. Right. Right. You know, I, you know, I'm always, a, I'm always a believer that, you know, no, uh, you know, sometimes it just has to be no, but most of the time, if everybody sits down, we can figure out a solution to yes. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, I, I work with buyers all the time that sometimes they'll talk to a lender and a lender says, hey, we can't, we're not going to be able to give you a loan due to your situation. Right. And I tell them, hey, just because somebody says no doesn't mean that we give up. Let's keep looking. Right. Let's talk because right. everybody's got different requirements. You know, what this, what this lender can do, they're bound by these right. criteria. Let's go talk to somebody yeah. else. Let's find yeah. out who can help. Yeah, because I think as a lender, I look at it. I I don't want to loan money that puts somebody up uh, for failure. Right. Uh, you you want to say here's here's a path to success. Let's don't give you a path to failure. Let's give you a right. path to success, and and then it's up to you to choose the path. Right. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, uh, whether it be in leadership or whether it be in business, you try to create a path to success, not a path to failure, because we're all going to fail at some point in time. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but that doesn't mean we, we don't quit looking for the path to success. Absolutely. So here, here in this Pulaski County area, you're a pretty well-known guy. Most, most people know who you are, but what is something that people that know you probably don't know about you? Um, that I'm an introvert. I would never guess. Um, uh, I get extremely uh, nervous about speaking in public. Uh, and you, uh, yeah, I practice law. I tried jury trials. I mean, that's what I did. I tried jury cases, but, uh, but my, my interferes are, uh, in big and big social environments, um, uh, being outside my comfort zone. I, you know, getting, you know, doing this today, uh, I, I prompt my, my stomach has been turning the whole time. Really? I would never guess. You're no, no. you're an eloquent speaker. Did you did you do Toastmasters or anything like that? Nope, nope, really, uh, nope. Uh, uh, self taught, I guess. Uh, no, no, I didn't do Toastmasters. I oh, I did debate in college. I mean, but that was because I was pre law. <laughs> yeah, because because they said you had to do that, right? But um, that is something that I, I've had to to work on. Um, it was like, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you were around, you know, when we had the, the downsizing out at Fort Leonard Wood and um, we had the public hearing and um, they asked me if I would be the moderator of the public hearing. And you go, oh, yeah, sure. Well, There's only about twenty five hundred people there. If you ask my wife, I was terrible to be around for about a week uh, and it went off fine. But th that's something that. Um, I, I'm, I, I, I truly, uh, have to, uh, keep pushing myself, um, uh, to, uh, and, and gosh, I'm 65 years old. So I've been doing this for, you know, 35 years. <laughs> uh, but that is something that to try jury trials and to try cases and to meet people I have to overcome every day. Yeah. Oh, so I, I listened to Brendan Bouchard. He's he's written a, a several books, but Brendan Bouchard is like a success coach and high performance coach. And right. he talks about um, whenever he goes out on stage, he feels this, the, the same feeling of anxiety is also right. what you feel when you're excited. So he tells himself before yeah. he walks out on the stage in front of thousands of people that this actual anxiety that he's feeling is I'm excited. I'm excited. And he said, when he gets out there, it just fuels his energy right. and it turns into something far greater than, than what it right. was. And, and boy, you do, you have to, you have to turn that uh, fear uh, into the ability to turn it into positive um, uh, attributes. And, and that's what I try to do. Uh, 
uh, it's when I get over a golf ball and there's a lot of people looking, uh, I, two things are going to happen, right? Either I'm going to hit a great shot or it's going to be bad, but I'm going to hit the shot. Yeah. And gotta then I'm going to hit the, ball, hit the next gotta one. Swing. And then I'm going to hit the next one. Yeah. But it, it, if, if I can play without losing a golf ball, then I'm happy. So there we go. Hey, that's a win, man. So hopefully I told you something about uh, me that you didn't know. So you, you did, go. you did. So one, one last thought, what is something that you would leave with my listeners that you would just encourage them to keep going and, and fight the fight to accomplish their goals? What would you leave them with? Um, believe in yourself, trust your ideas and be willing to stand up for your ideas and not let somebody else do it for you. Yeah. It's really easy to put whenever somebody says, I don't like that idea in the, in the group meeting setting to just put your head down and not say anything. That's, that's the easy route, the non-confrontational, but to actually say, you know what, this is why I think that this is a good idea. Have right. confidence. Because I, I promise you, let's say if you're in a group of uh, 15 people, there's probably nine or 10 other people that are thinking the same thing you are, but nobody's nobody steps forward and just believe in yourself. Don't be somebody else, but have faith in your ideas and your beliefs mm -hmm. and be willing to, uh, to go out and, and swing the, and swing the ball, swing, swing the club. And it, it may, it may not go straight the first time, but it will eventually. Yeah. Even a blind squirrel gets a nut sometimes. That's right. That's right. There you go. Have faith. It's true. Well, hey, thank you, brother. I greatly oh. appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's fantastic. Oh. Um, look forward to hearing from you, and, I, and I'll see you. I'll see you in the community, man. Yeah. So I actually, I did. I signed up for the leadership course. So C has been after me for eleven years to do it, and uh, I thought, oh man, I'm too old to do that because all of you young guys are doing it. And uh, but I thought, you know, I'm going to learn something from y'all. So that's why I'm doing it. You haven't been through it yet. I thought you were. No. I thought you were class two. Nope. You never done it. Oh, you're going to love it. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I and, love you know, that it, program. Yeah. And so uh, I always give a plug to the leadership, uh, Pulaski County. Uh, but, you know, but th there again, so I'm 65. How old are you? I'm 38 years old. I learn from you every day. Never be afraid to learn something. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Okay. That is, that's killer. And you're going to love that program. It, oh, yeah. I, I learned so much and you've, you've lived here longer than I have. I moved here in 2018, but there were people in my class that have spent most of their lives here in yeah. their forties and have never experienced, not right. been into places, not toured that wagon, wagon wheel, uh, oh, yeah, museum. No Holy crap. That it's everything, amazing. Everything. We have so much rich history right here in Pulaski County. This place is incredible. This is right. an incredible place to live, but the networking that you get from that, yeah. the friendships I made, I made friends with people that I would have probably never met. Right. So I'm right. so grateful to that program. Yeah. And you know, people talk, you know, when, when I talk about the community, I'm proud to be here. Yeah. This is where we chose to live and raise our family. And we have so much to offer and we, we should be so grateful for we have, what we have. Just don't try to become something you're not. Right. Be what you are. There you go. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. We're about to get cut off, but thank you so yep. much. You have a wonderful day, brother. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. See you, man.